A very good evening and welcome to the Citizens for Recovery podcast. My name is Young Leader Blake Henderson. Joining me today again is Instagram superstar for the Melbourne City Football Club, Tanya Davis. Tanya, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Blake? I'm very well, thank you. Also joining us is again our partners for this podcast, Talking Cities legend producer Matt McAdoo. Matt, how are you, Matt? As I say every week, any time I get to spend with you, Blake, is uh, is the best time possible. And also making his debut on the podcast today, the man, the myth, the legend, and new father, Captain Extraordinaire, Scott Jemison. Scotty, welcome, mate. How are you? Thank you, Blakey. Thank you. I've been a bit disappointed. I haven't been given a call up uh, prior to this, so um, I'm glad I'm on it now, that's for sure. Well, you can blame Mel for that, mate. We did ask for you a little bit earlier and he would not let us have you. So Don't get me started you on were that. busy. Don't get me started <laughs> on the show. I will not do that. But anyway, guys, just for the reason why we are here, we still are donating, getting donations for the citizens for recovery for the Melbourne set. That together uh, as a group, uh, us three here plus another young leader have raised over $1,200 Australian. So again, I want to thank you on that. A little bit later on the show, we'll be having the head of CITC join us to uh, just uh, give you guys a little bit more information. Now, Scott, Citizens for Recovering the CITC program. I know you love it. Uh, talk to us about your experiences with it. With what, sorry? Uh, the CITC program, Sydney in the Community. Yeah, no, um, obviously um, it's something that when you come to the football club, you're um, you're fully aware of um, the effort uh, that our football club puts into, obviously um, our community uh, and, and trying to, from within, um, you know, raise some, some some young leaders inside that community. So um, it's been very enjoyable to be a part of. Um, you know, met some great people along the way. Um, we've got some great people inside our, our club. Um, I won't name um, the people on this chat because um, it'll look like I'm sm- uh, blowing smoke up your ass. But um, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's been enjoyable. And we've we've, um, we've got great people involved in it, which which ultimately makes it a, a great program. It's exactly right. And you have experience going out to clubs, and especially the I Speak Football program as well. Um, what made you when you first came to Melbourne City? What made you so interact with the city and community? Oh, I think, look, um, I'm fully aware of the opportunity and um, the blessing I've been given to, to be able to play football, Blakey. Um, I don't uh, necessarily take it lightly and um, the opportunity to, to get out and spread any message uh, I can um, is one that, um, you know, is definitely not a burden. I think it's a, a great responsibility to do and, um, you know, with our message at Melbourne and trying to really, um, you know, produce young leaders but also help the community, uh, it's something that I really enjoy. And if I can help one person or, or, or be it um, 100, it doesn't matter as long as we can have a positive impact on the community um, and ultimately, um, you know, make people feel as good as they can and, and inspire them to be the best version of themselves. Um, I, I just want to say on behalf of the city and the community, thank you for donating your match day shirt and the training top along with your boots. And I think you've donated as well. So we, I want to thank you for that as well. I'm going to hand it off to our two lovely co-hosts here to ask you a few questions and I might butt in as well. So thank you, Matt. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations on your new baby. Um, I think everyone has some baby questions for you. So, um, Renee actually wants to know how's the 3 a.m. feeding times going so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, look, it's been obviously um, a complete uh, change in, in my world and, and obviously uh, Vic's world and, and we've um, adapted to it as good as we can. Uh, it's been tough. There's no doubt about it. You you kind of understand um, when you see people, whether it's friends or, or, or people on, on social media, that they don't give you the bad parts of, of necessarily the, uh, the newborn. So... We're, we're doing as good as we can and, and Vic's been great and, and Cooper's uh, healthy, albeit um, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a bit of a sook. Yeah, he's a bit of a sook. Aww. He doesn't get his, uh, his dummy or, or, or my pinky um, to, to suck on. So Aww. it's something that um, we're still getting used to, but uh, albeit it's, um, it's a blessing and one that, um, you know, it was, a, it was a great journey. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, well, I actually have a question for myself because I'm a pet owner. 
I know mm. you also have a papa. Uh, yes. I'm not going to have a baby anytime soon, but I want to know how has it been like introducing the dog to the baby? Have you not really done it yet? Oh, hello. Well, there he is. Oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> He's just over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my finger right in there. there is that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, well, that was, that was something that um, I was excited to, to witness. Um, anyone who knows me pretty well knows that um, I treat Axel and we treat Axel like a, a pretty much a, a baby anyway. Uh, he's pretty much human as itself. So to get the opportunity to, to bring Cooper home to Axel was, was amazing. There's, I've got a great video that I'll probably put up in social media at a later date, but the first kind of interaction was, was one that um, we were excited to see and, and, and Axel was brilliant. was excited. Oh. We was a bit hesitant to see what, um, what, what we brought home. It wasn't food, which he was surprised about. Usually it's food. But, uh, <laughs> It was a, a new addition to the to the family, and um, yeah, he he he's really uh, adapted to it. You know, licks, smells, doesn't get too close or, or, or too mm. excited as of yet. But um, I'm excited to, to to have, I guess, the 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 dog, the son, kind of grow up as best mates. And mm. um, I had a kid when I, was, I had a dog when I was a, a kid, so I know the relationship that that animals can have on on kids. And I'm just excited to to be able to to see Axel and, and Cooper become best mates. Oh, me too. I want to see all the baby dog photos. <laughs> yes. But um, I'll move on to a question that's actually about football. Um, Raj just wanted to know, um, who was your favourite football club and player when you were a kid? Um, it's, it's probably uh, a tough one because I guess we're in Australia, we grow up and you, you see from afar, you know, Premier League times at 1am in the morning and um, you, you kind of get drawn to the best team. So as a youngster, I loved um, Manchester United. Um, controversial as, as it stands because we're in the city group, but there was a young, young <laughs> Scott Jamison. So I, I really um, enjoyed me United, got all the kits, uh, everything associated with it. And then I actually went to Bolton Wanderers to obviously play and um, it, it quickly got you know, beat out to me that, um, you know, you couldn't really be a Man United fan because Bolton and Manchester are, mm -hmm. are very close in terms of suburbs, as you know. So um, the, the support of, of United kind of slowed down there. And and, and now um, it's always a case of um, I'm, I'm cheering home city, aren't I? Because um, yes. we're family, aren't we? Yes, yeah. yes, we are. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, in that case, um, uh, you know, obviously growing up in Australia, like who was, uh, what clubs did you play at? When you were younger, yep. when you were developing, um, Hado yeah. actually asked that question. Well, I grew up in Western Sydney, um, Blacktown boy, pretty much a, a stone throw away from, um, you know, where Western Sydney uh, are based now in terms of Blacktown. So I grew up um, in, in probably, uh, you know, a proper football um, so, you know, football area as such, Western Sydney, and, and, and had um, a lot of play that play league now have come out of. So I played at Blacktown City Demons or Kings Angley Soccer Club first, Blacktown City Demons. And while I was I was playing, I was at um, a high school called Westfield Sports High, which, you know, is famed for a lot of players. Um, you know, Azamoy was there. Um, we've had um, you know, Harry Keel back in the day. Um, Jason Cellino, I believe, was there. So... Danny Vukovic, you know the 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 name of the, the names just keep rolling off in terms of Westfields and, and recently I think it's Mustafa Amini, you know Bernie Abini, Matty Ryan. So um, the head coach there was Trevor Morgan, who, who's just been appointed the the, the technical director. So um, grew up with 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 that in my um, in my arsenal, and, and I'm pretty certain it's made a big part in where I am today. Mm, cool. Uh, if you didn't like football and golf, what would you be doing now? Asked Michael. Uh, I'd try and be a host on Talking City podcast. Um, <laughs> um, or be a, be a tough gig to get in. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I'm a people person. I enjoy uh, company. So I, I'd be pretty certain it would be something in sales or, or going down that path. Um, I'd say so. Maybe after football, that's that's where we go. Um, that's to be a salesman. Involved. Yeah, door to door salesman. Involved, involved with people, that's for sure. But um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would say something like that. Maybe a, a car dealership. That's what I could have nah, it, A PGA used car or a new about. car? <laughs> new, new, new. Yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, no, you'll be on the PGA Tour, mate. PGA Tour, that's where you'll PGA, be. Right? No, no, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> my ambition uh, outrides my ability there, Blake. Um, yeah. Unless uh, lightning hits me and then I uh, end up recovering as a as an amazing touch golfer. Touch wood. Around, I'll just yeah. be hitting on the weekends with, with mates. 
<laughs> well, you're always right, well, welcome on Talking City. If you can get Pav to agree, we'd have you every week, mate. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that can be the retirement job. Well, I've got um, two more questions. Um, I think some people are concerned that obviously you're not returning to the hub. Um, I think they're a bit worried that you might be starting to get a bit of a dad bod. So Life Smoothie, Jess and Chris wanted to know, um, how do you stay on track nutrition wise? Or have you dropped it all now and becoming, you know, the dad bod? Yeah, no, there's no dad bod as such. Um, I kind of gave myself a little bit of time off, um, you know, in regards to you know, trying to to adapt to the early start of, of, of Cooper's life. But no, nah, I'm still going all right. Um, you know, I've got uh, friends who, who are involved with, with Life Smoothie who um, have helped out with uh, a smoothie that, that is just a quick um, whip up and it gives me a chance not to, to have to cook for uh, Vic and I. So... It helped out, That's but good. um, yeah, I'll, I'll be getting back into proper training, um, or be it probably next week and, and in preparation for for the start of next season, I'd say. Mm-mm. Okay, well, we have another question about kind of nutrition or so much, or you don't like these. Uh, Petros wants to know what do you have against chickpeas? <laughs> so, Petros is our uh chef at the training ground, Adonis Catering. Um, a fantastic man, uh, a very good chef, and a soon-to-be father also. So congratulations to him. Um, I'm probably the biggest pain in the ass to Petros when it comes to uh, the Melbourne City players because of the uh, requests I have. And one of the requests I have is pick your chickpeas. Um, I don't see the need for chickpeas in any in, in any forms of life. Uh, I don't know why they're invented. I don't know. <laughs> so why. no hummus. You don't like hummus then, like no. Well, I do like hummus, but I don't like chickpeas. The actual um, chickpeas themselves. Okay. And I get that. Yeah. So, so I do give Petros a hard time, but you know, when you're one of the best chefs going around, you you have to accept that people have uh, requirements and and requests. So that's why Petros asked that question because. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's just say I have a few requests in, in chickpeas and, and some vegetables are, are definitely welcome. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Pedros too, mate. Congratulations on your upcoming uh, birth of your child as well. So yeah, hopefully is. Cooper mm. and uh, their child could get become best friends. Um, Matt, oh, oh. <laughs> Matt, over to you, mate. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go down a little bit of a, a football path. We talked about, we talked on Tuesday before the game on SEN and you know, we were all pretty confident of the result and, and I think we showed where the future of this club could lie with Cola and um, Moody having such strong performances. How stoked are you for, for those young guys to get those minutes and put in that level of performance? Yeah, I think it's really good. I, I think we, um, you know, in terms of the A-League, I think we've been a leading team in regards to giving opportunity to, to the youth, um, especially since I've been at this club. Um you know, I believe we've been at the forefront of, of opportunities um, and also at the same time maintaining a chance, a, a push to win stuff. Um, it's easy to be coming last and, and give kids opportunities. Um, I think if that's the case, you are coming last, give kids opportunities. But when you're competing um, and, and, and you're publicly stating you want to win stuff and at the same time still giving opportunity to, to younger players, um, I, I think it's something to be applauded. And you know, we get a lot of a shit about, you know, the, the, the whole backing of our football club and, and, and all this. But when we have a player who supported the club from day one um, and then coming through as a supporter and then coming through the academy and then ending up signing a first team contract um, and then ultimately, you know, starting, uh, making his starting debut, I think that says, um, you know, that, that's a massive success story, you know, a massive feather in our cap as a football club. Um, I believe... You know, Europe have it all, all the time. Their history in football is massive. You have stories of, of, of fans. You know, Kieran Tierney, I was watching a, a thing before. Kieran Tierney, the Celtic player, was a fan, grew up, played the first team, ended up captaining him. So, you know, for us to have Stefan Kolakowski as a, a fan, now a first team player, is, is something that we should be shouting to the rooftops um, and certainly driving that message. And, and for him and, and Woody to do well the other night was was good. Um, you know, Wales, he came on, did well and... You know, uh, Nathaniel has done well at, at left back, albeit um, he can't kick with his left foot. Um, he's doing really well there at left back. And, you know, some other, Connor, Connor was brewing again. Um, he's been out of the team for a while and, and definitely um, came back in. So the future is bright for us. There's no doubt about it. Um, albeit we need um, experienced players to keep driving them and, and keep them on the straight and narrow. Yeah, I think it's almost kind of taken for granted how young Connor Atkinson, Wales actually are like they've been around for so long that you just 
forget that they're still such young players, like from memory, Connor, is they're what two out of three are all under 21 and are all eligible yeah. for the Olympics. So, you know, that that's huge. And for Australian football, not just, uh, not just Melbourne city. And I remember when Steph uh, was on the bench earlier this year, there was actually a video that someone, I think it was one of his family members posted of him, um, a home video Juggling. of him doing yeah. some uh, yeah. juggling. Was it with Fred? And Zara. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah and, uh, and he's been on the talking city page and uh, he did have a bit of a flex on us though. He did upload a selfie with his new haircut and his frame shirt in the background. So <laughs> bit of a, bit of a weird flex, but we liked it um, <laughs> all about him. What have you made of the, uh, the haircuts during ISO? There's been some brilliant ones come out. What's been your favorite so far, Scotty? Uh, are you allowed to swear in this? Mate, you already you, did. You've got to no, listen no, no, to the no. podcast. <laughs> I think they're shit, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's been some I, shocking. I, I, I do applaud the the, um, you know, the the balls of the boys to to have these be- bleached uh, blonde hair with mohawks or whatever. And you know, I, I'm kind of from the old school, but in a sense, I've I've kind of learnt that you know a haircut doesn't define someone by no stretch of the mean. And um, the key is if you're playing well, you can have whatever haircut you, you, you want. Um, as soon as you have a bad game, um, you know, that's when you get a tap on the shoulder from myself or someone else saying, listen, um, yeah, you, you can't be play, you can't be uh, having a haircut like that and, and playing as bad. So as long as they keep playing well, uh, I've got no issues with it. I, I think it's, um, it, it, it's quite out there and, and hopefully there's a few young players. Um, no, so I shouldn't say that. No, hopefully there's no academy players at Melbourne city that follow this haircut. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they haven't done that yet. It's like yeah, uh, it's like fluoro boots, isn't it? You've got to you've got to be the best on the team to have fluoro boots. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if 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 I come up against an opposition player, and this is truth, if I come up against an opposition player and he does something really bad, and here's a haircut like that, I'll happily let him know. Um, and uh, <laughs> I've heard you. I actually recall Sydney FC players actually giving it to Walsey, um two games ago. So. Um, we ultimately had that last laugh there, and, and, and rightly so. But um, yeah, you, you put yourself out there. You've got to be big, big enough to accept. And, and fair play to, to Collar and Walsey. They um, they have personalities that they they don't really um, care of, of, of other people's opinions. But um, at the same time, they understand that uh, they need to do well to to to, to have these hairstyles as such, and, and they're doing that. So uh, yeah. Matt usually has a question. Sorry, Matt. Um, no, no, you go. He has asked both Craig Noon and Richard <laughs> Wingicker. <laughs> and um, I hope you're ready for this, mate. They've both been asked, would you rather fight a gemo-sized spider or a thousand spider-sized gemos? Now, which... So- <laughs> would I rather fight a thousand-sized gemo spiders yeah, no, it's, so a thousand spider sized gemos. Spider sized gemos. Yeah, or one uh, gemo sized spider. One gemo sized spider. Yeah, so what do you think both Richard and Craig had said? That they said what I said. You reckon the, the spider? Yeah. Well, Matt McAdoo from Talkie City, uh, I believe <laughs> they both said a thousand spider sized gemos. Yeah, well, really? it's, it's a much better way to fight. We go through this every week. <laughs> if you think about it, you can step on like 30 at once compared yeah, to one other, huge yeah. spider. Yeah, think of the, the fang size. They're going to climb up the back of your neck and then literally just, just smash it, right? If you go against one, you're going to take him down. Yeah, but think of the think of the size of the fang and then you've got the width of the legs. Nah, I think I think you're wrong here, Jamo, and um, I'm not willing <laughs> to accept your answer. <laughs> But well, at I least picked the Jemo size. size spider. <laughs> I picked the Jemo size spider only because, and I don't know if actually it is true now that I think about it, because I said that I was a centimetre taller than you. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm no, I like a challenge. <laughs> no, we're the same, man. Okay, all go. right. Just to, uh, <laughs> to jump back into the football side of things, so obviously since the resumption, we've been very impressive. I think there's only been, what, 20 minutes out of the whole the whole time where we've been kind of the uh, the team under pressure, how proud of the group are you for that? Because obviously it's a big ask to go away and have effectively an off season and then come back and and be so on form and so switched on for, straight from the outset. Yeah, I, you hit the nail on the head there. I think the the dedication and the drive of not the team but as individuals. Um, no one could could question you know that that from from our from our players um 
obviously it was a, a tough time for, for everyone, not just footballers, but, you know, um, for, for everyone in the world. But, you know, for us to keep training without any clear car- uh, clarifications of, of what was happening um, was a testament to, to us as, as a playing group, but also as individuals, but also a testament to, to our staff. You know, our staff were amazing in um, identifying what we needed to do in that off time. And, um, you know, the programs that were given to us were, were fantastic. So we, um, we uh, to, to be honest with you, I'm not surprised that we've, we've, we've done so well because of the, you know, I, I know of the, the amount of application and dedication we, um, we applied to, to uh, our programs in the off season. So, you know, we've come back and we've had a lot of time to, to work on things. And, you know, we, we obviously had to escape Victoria to get to, to Sydney and, and be in a hub for two weeks. So we've had our, our challenges and uh, we've overcame them. And I think, you know, for us as a, as a group and as a club, um, we've come through with flying colours, albeit, you know, we've got two games left, hopefully, to to really put a an exclamation mark on on, on the last um, you know, three to four months of, of I guess, pain for, for not just us, but also as, 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 a, as a, a nation and, and as a world. Yeah, it's definitely been an odd time for for everyone. But yeah, you can imagine the professional players, it would be taking a toll. And just to jump around a little bit here, we we saw the article with Roston Griffiths talking about the future of the the A League and how he how he thinks there's really a chance that in a way every A League player could be considered a free agent in a couple of weeks because no one knows what's going on. What are your thoughts on on where we are as a game and and you know, what do you think is gonna be what do you think the A League's gonna look like next season? It's a great question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of that whole conversation, um, you know, things have to pan out um, for us to, to get a clear um, summary of, of what's going to happen as such. You know, we need to know the landscape of, of where the league sits, you know, when the league resu- uh, starts again. A lot of things have to, to be nutted out before, um, you know, we, we, we start making assumptions of, of where we think we'll go. All I can say is at the moment, all we can control is what we're doing for the next two or three weeks. Um, and, and that just coincides with, with a game next Wednesday night um, and then a, a grand final. But, you know, behind the scenes, you know, the PFA will represent the players. Um, and, and I'm sure, you know, especially myself, who unfortunately hasn't got the, um, you know, the, the, the thought of, of a game um, on my mind, you know, I'll, I'll be able to, to really take it away from the boys over in New South Wales and, and try and shield them from that because, the biggest thing for us uh, at this very moment in time and, and the biggest controllable is is Wednesday night and, and that's the, the biggest thing. But in time, you know, we'll work out what happens next season and, and I'm sure our football club will do everything in, in its power to, to look after the players that um, that are contracted and the staff because they've done that up until now. Yeah, and it's definitely a credit to the club in the way that they've acted over this period, you know, they were one of the first clubs to come out and say that they're not going to, you know, be putting players or taking players off wages and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, a lot of credit needs to go to City and, and the way they've done things. Um, I think this season, especially just from a personal point of view, the way the club's acted just across the board has been fantastic. You know, the engagement with fans has been amazing. I still remember that night at the Imperial um, where we did that Q&A um, with yourself, Warren and Scott Munn. And, you know, the commitment from that night was the club's going to get better at the engagement. The club's going to do a lot. And and I think they have. And people are very prepared to talk shit about clubs, but they don't often give the pat on the back when they deserve it. So, yeah, agreed on that one. Back to a bit of football, Jamo. We'll go back to some more fun stuff. In terms of our, our system, it seems to be the most complicated in the league. And I, I think we've had quite a few people say it. Is there kind of any insights you can give without giving away too much for the people at home to understand how hard it is to just play. It's not as if you're just going out there and making it up as you go. Yeah, I think we, um, as a playing group, we, we needed a bit of time to able to understand uh, the philosophy that, that Eric uh, brought in and the benefit of, of having a long preseason helped us. Um, but I also think that we still haven't grasped it as, as, as much as we could have due to the, the, complex, um, the complexity of, of, of how complicated it is. And then with lockdown, that was a benefit of us too. We, we were able to, to work on it more. But, you know, as a, as a system and, and as players, you have to, you have to understand and, and really um, concentrate when it comes to training because, you know, the scenarios that, that Eric and the coaching staff put you in and, um, you know, work on in training are some of the, the, 
the, the situations you'll find yourself in a game. So everything that we do in training is, is identified for, for games. And, and I think that's a, a real uh, key to a successful coach is, is being able to um, put players in situations in training that that will replicate themselves on the weekend. And, you know, a lot's talked about our inverted fullbacks and, um, you know, with myself being a fullback, you know, you only learn probably one way as a fullback is running up and down and, and, and being as fit as you can. But with this system, um, it allows you to, to think a little bit different. Um, you know, it does take a little bit away from, from the overlapping traditional fullback, but at the same time, you, you are finding yourself a bit more central and, and, that in itself is, is something you need to work on. You know, it's not easy being a fullback, a fullback coming inside because as a fullback, you've only got um, two entrances of, of the opposition. You, you, your touchline is behind you, um, whereas when you're a centre midfielder, there's a 360 um, opportunity for players to come at you. So you need to be able to work on that in training, and, and that's what Eric does. So it's been great to, to, to learn this system, and, and there's so much more I think we can build on it, and that's exciting. Yeah, it, it definitely seems to suit the, the players that we've got in this year. It seems to be everyone knows their role. Everyone's ready to step in when needed. Is there much of a tweak in between opposition teams or is the, uh, is the opinion that the system is strong enough to beat whoever's put in front of it? No, no. Um, you know, we, we, we identify the, 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 I guess, the formation that an opposition team will play and then it, it'll work um, off that. You know, you... you you find um, even the best teams in the world, um, they don't have one set way of playing. Um, you need to be able to, to identify strengths and weaknesses of an opposition team and then, you know, tweak things inside your system. You know, the, the, the real spine of, of everything you, you, you work on is there, but you can work on little tweaks to, to be able to counter their weaknesses. And that's what we do as a team. We, we identify if a team plays four at the back or they play three at the back or you know, we find that they press in a different way to, to other teams. You have to be able to manipulate that. So there's, there's certain little tweaks that probably people don't get to to blatantly see, but as players in it, and if it was really broken down to, to a fan of, of what's going on, they, they definitely understand that, um, you know, we do little di- different things for different teams. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that would be amazing to one day learn as a fan to kind of understand how much goes into it. In terms of last night, you know, the, the job for the boys was, was fairly simple. It was go out there and, and just don't get injured effectively. We had nothing really on the line. How, how proud of you or how happy are you for uh, Jamie to be able to, to get his goals and take the boot away and make sure it's his own rather than having to share it? And he didn't miss the penalty this time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we speak regularly, um, daily, and um, it was definitely... Uh, brought up in conversation I'll, I'll say not from my side but more for, from his and um, he'll never say this publicly but um, yeah, he wanted to be the outright um, and, and that was clear and um, people might see that as a negative but I just see that as a positive and I think that's uh, you know contributes to him being you know probably the best striker in the league because of the the mindset he has that you know he wants to be the the, the best striker and um, the key with, with, with Mac is that you know, he will he will be able to put the team first. Um, he puts in a shift defensively, and people won't probably see that as, as much as him scoring goals. But for him to, to be the outright goal scorer, I know he wasn't too happy with Richard when <laughs> when Richard brought down uh, Bessart. Um, <laughs> but then um, we we had an opportunity to score again. So I, I know that uh, Richard apologised to to, to Macca yeah. when he scored his second, just in regards to the opportunity that he gave Bess. But um, I think you saw from the the, uh, the celebration of, of all the boys getting around um, J Mac because um, he's a very popular person inside our club and um, you know a very humble guy for, for for the standing he has in the game at the moment being a soccer in number nine and um, you know he, he's earned the, the success he's had and I think it's the third season now he's scored over twenty goals so first you know, in history that, I believe great feat and. Um, yeah, he, he's doing really well, but uh, hopefully he's got a few more goals left in him in the next uh, two games, hopefully. I still yeah, remember, but... uh, just before you jump in, Blake, the, one yeah. of the first things he said to us on it, the SEN interview we did with him at the start of the year was, I want to win the golden boot because it means my team will be near the top of the table. He's like, if I'm winning the golden boot, it means the team's having success. Um, and I think, yeah, you're right. That shows he didn't really care about it for himself because he even said that later on. He's like, I don't really care about the golden boot as an individual thing. 
just if the team's up there, it means I'm scoring goals for the team and we're doing well. So, yeah, yeah I think that's, 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 that's exactly player. right. I think that um, hits the nail on the head there because you, if you are scoring goals and you like to think the defence is stopping goals, then, then we're winning lots of games. Um, but, and, I, and I know it was never really brought up, you know, in the midst of the season, but um, you know, leading into this last game, I, I, uh, it was brought up and... Um, I could definitely tell he, he was trying to get any opportunity to, to get the back of the net and thankfully uh, hit too. All right. Just before we go to a fun little game, before we let you go, Matt, do we have any comments on the YouTube channel? Yeah, we've got a, a comment from Simon Lyon. He says he, he misses you guys and congratulations oh. on your newborn, Scotty. He can't, can't wait for the virus to end so he can come visit you guys at training. He's a legend of Lion. Oh, I, I love Simon Lyon. Yeah, he's a legend. He always turns up with uh, his friends, one being Jody, who um, mm-hmm. is a, she turned into a City fan, but she's also a rugby league fan and um, they're great people to have. I know, um, you know Simon was un- unable to come to a few games because of the health of his family member, I believe. So yeah. mm-hmm. hopefully you know, the, that, that's better. But um, yeah, that, that's a key to, to, to also what we miss is obviously the fans and uh, the special people you meet along the way. And, um, you know, we get a lot of shit because of our, our fans and the amount of numbers, but um, make no mistake about it, we have some, some real special fans and we're going to try and real build our, our fan base and, and keep continuing to, to be a, a, a real big family. I also believe that Jodie is your number one supporter, according to her. <laughs> so. she, is, she is, but she, she doesn't like me for why, for two two weekends of the year because my rugby league team is the Canberra Raiders and, and her rugby league team is the Melbourne Storm. So when we play each other, um, she's uh, she's very vocal in, in letting me know that um, she's got a complete <laughs> Storm will win. So um, Jodie's, uh, Jodie's fantastic along with, with the line and, and they're great people. Do we have any more uh comments there, Matt? Or? Yeah, one more has just come through from uh, Bilbo Baggins. He wants to know how to get <laughs> noticed by A-League teams and how to try and play from. So I'm assuming that's from a youth perspective. Yes. I don't think he's, a, he's an old striker trying to sneak his way in. Um, well, if he is, tell him to send the CV through. You're never, you're never too old. Um, I think it's just a case of, um, well, playing uh, and, and playing well in your respective team or, or league. And the more you, uh, the more games you play, and the, the better you play, you, you, you'll start getting noticed, and, and and with that comes higher levels of of, of competitiveness. And, and once you start hitting higher levels and doing well, you go to the next one, and then ultimately um, inside Australia, it's the A League. So if you keep doing well um, in your respective league, um, you never know you could you could find yourself at an A League team, and and hopefully it's at Melbourne City. So, uh, I've got one more question. Go I got one more question. Yeah. I forgot. I, I didn't realize I, I did write this down. It was from someone called SC Mac, and he wanted to know, Jamo, how often do you mow your lawns in winter? Yeah, so this is one of my good mates who lives across the road, literally across <laughs> the road. And um, <laughs> we probably see each other once every day. And uh, When you're mowing a, the lawns. Hand. Yeah, he's a helping hand because um, I don't have a lawnmower and uh, he does. So. It usually uh, trades off with him doing a lawnmower and, and I give him a beer and, and then we're happy days. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But, but, man, he's, a, he's a good man and um, he's someone that's helping out, obviously, with Cooper and his wife, Vanessa, so we're lucky. So for okay. Christmas, I'm going to get you a lawnmower. That's it, yep, a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. oh, a lawnmower. Uh, before we let Scott go, uh, we're going to play a little word associate game, associate with, with you. These are A-League players or players around the world. So, Tanya and Matt, please jump in with any play- players. Please keep it, try to keep it PG, Scott. Try to. Uh, the, the name comes up in the first word that comes to my mind. Yes, correct. So, I am yeah. going to start off with an easy one. Dean Bersanis. Catley. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to think about it. I had to uh, actually, because uh, he's a good mate. Um, no, I, I, I will say Dean equals fashion. Fashion. Nathaniel Atkinson. Fashion. Nathaniel Atkinson. Yeah. DJ. Tasmania. Yeah, you guys could jump in at any time as well. Oh, obviously, Bruce. I said DJ. I've got to ask. <laughs> Brisha? Brisha. Angry. Angry. Uh, Luke what Braddon. about... Um... Who? Luke Braddon. Oh, how many words can I actually say about that guy? Go, go for um, it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say the first word that actually comes to mind is genuine. What about the um, Westy Mitch Duke? Money. 
to sign in Saudi Arabia, hasn't he? He's, he's not a Westie anymore now, is he? <laughs> no, the Westie's long but gone. <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's the first one that comes to my mind now, money. What about Patrick Clutch? Is... Clutch? Yeah, Clutch. Bratton, because he has his car, didn't he? Clutch. <laughs> what a wanker. Yeah, I saw him in Collingwood once with it, and I thought, oh. yep, no, nah, I rate he's that. He's a father, too, of a, of a beautiful <laughs> young girl who's about two or three, and he, and he probably takes her to... God knows, dancing lessons or anything, and they see this guy turning up in a BMW that has clutch, and they just think, wow. I think it was black and clutch. gold number plates, too, from memory. Yeah. Oh. That kid kind of up, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, Patrick Vistolbo. Tough. Eric or... Lombard. Oh, Eric? Oh, oh Eric yeah. Style. Style. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Uh, actually, this is not an actual play, uh, player. It's a member of the Melbourne City A-League team, Josh Bonded. Champion. Champion. Okay. And uh, uh, Matt McIndoe. Matt McIndoe? Mm-hmm. Voice of radio. That's three. <laughs> Ace for radio is what I would call this, but I'll take that. Penny <laughs> uh, Davis. Die hard with a dash. Oh. I thought you said try hard for a second. I was like, oh. savage. <laughs> die hard. Die hard. Uh, uh, Adidas. Say- yeah. Who? Adidas. What? Beckham. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Player. Sergio Aguero. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> what about Balotelli? Crazy. <laughs> he never grew up, that guy. <laughs> crazy slash, or crazy, or could have said nutcase. Yeah. Um, the final one for me. Though, so if he wants to come to Australia, I'm sure he'll give us some, some headlines. I think he oh, just signed with someone. I think he signed in Italy from memory. Okay. Again. Yeah, I think he's back, <laughs> uh, but at a lower level. Okay. Uh, the final Actually, if, one, Jammo, if you could wish that any player in the world could come to the A League and maybe either play for us or just in the A League in general, who would you who would you want to come to Australia? Okay, I think there's two types. There's one obviously that I just would like to come to the A League, and then there's one that I'd like to for us to come to, to come and play for us. So the first one I'd like to come and play in the A League would be, um, you know, Messi. Uh, I think just get Messi here and then literally. Um, What's AFL? What's rugby league? If yeah, you know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> to come and play in our team, wow! I think it might be like a left field kind of someone, but I think someone like David Silva would have been amazing. Like, mm. you know, I generally think you know he's not the biggest name in terms of you know like a uh, a Beckham or, or Del Piero as such, but I just think a football player who's so amazing would then transform people to come and watch. I mean, people are making a lot out of Diamante and, and I think Diamante has been great, but I just think someone like David Silva would, would trump, you know, and, and that's no disrespect to D- Diamante. He's obviously younger than David Silva, but I just think, wow, to have someone like that on your team. Um, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Would be, yeah, amazing. Uh, uh, just a couple more before we let you go, Scott. Uh, yep. One from me, Bruno Fornaroli. Tuna. Tuna. Matt and uh, Tanya, you got any more? Mm, no, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Lampard. Clampard. Well, you, you were at the club when he was uh, rumoured to be signing. Wayne. No, I wasn't. That's off. what I was going to say. It's a oh two my word God. Sneakiest transfer that, ever yeah. when he came yeah, out for like Man that's City. That's a one-worded uh, association. That's a missed opportunity because I think mm. you know, he would have definitely brought bums on seats. But more importantly, I think he would have been amazing for, for the team and the club to, to have, uh, you know, help achieve results. So that's definitely a, a drop ball from, from the, the powers that be at the FFA. What about David Villa? The class, yeah, he was, he was class. I, didn't, I actually don't know if I played against him. I, I was in the league when he was here. I just don't know if I played against you him. You would have been lucky, mate. He only played, what, four games? Yeah. That, About that 300 minutes. Yeah, I went to the away game in Sydney yeah. when they played Sydney yeah. FC. Yeah, and that was it. it. Scored against Sydney, so scored two so, days off the plane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great if he'd stuck it out for for a whole year. Unfortunately, he didn't. But um, that's someone that hopefully we can we can try and well at least equal uh, to him uh, to try and entice to to come down under and, and really help us. I got one more, Blake. Tim Cahill. 
Legend. Yeah, Tim, Tim's a legend. And you can say what you want about Tim, but um, yeah, he's a legend of Australian football and, and the soccer room, probably the greatest soccer room of all time. You just can't say it on Twitter. <laughs> it's a bit of a bashing on Twitter, unfortunately. I've, I've read about Tim, but my dealings with Tim were, were, were he was a, a, a gentleman and you know someone that um, yeah worked hard. It's a bit of the opposite to you, Scotty. Just to give you a bit of insight, he's uh, he's very quick on the old block button. Yeah, I've read that too. Has he has he blocked yeah, Talking City? Has block he? happy. No, no, not Talking City. We've uh, we've been polite, but there was a there was a whole thread on soccer Twitter blocked by Tim Cahill, and there was a lot of people who have been blocked for not saying very much. Yeah. 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 So look good um, on him. Look, if he doesn't want to read like you know bad stuff, he doesn't want to read bad stuff. It is what but, it is. Uh, we better let you get back to dad duty, yes. Um On behalf of uh, Citizens for Recovery, I want to thank you for taking your time, time out of your busy night uh, to come on and have a chat with us. Uh, we really do appreciate it, mate. And I do make you a promise. When that dunny toilet lands in Melbourne, I will be bringing my hazmat suit around with your, with your jersey, your shorts and everything, and the captain's armband so you can lift it. <laughs> Thank you very much. That'd be great. That'd be great. It's uh, I just, exciting. I just wanted to say like one last thing while I've got Blake and Jamo here at the same time. Um, I know we haven't known each other for a very long time, but both of you have been very welcoming in me being part of the club this season. And I just wanted to say thank you. And it is so good knowing both of you. And I think about you guys all the time. And I hope once all this COVID stuff is over, can hang out with you guys again because I miss you guys. I mean, you obviously um, support the the club, but you also support the group uh, and city. So you know, someone like yourself, Tanya, who's passionate about the club, uh, is something that you know we need. And, and along with Blake, you know, I've said it about Blake. You know, people like Blake inside the club who who work their ass off and starting as community people and and, and work their way through. Um, if you have people like yourselves inside our club. Uh, the, the club will go on to, to, to form a very successful club. So um, thanks for your, your help and your support, both of you. And, and, and obviously, um, you know, the talk Thank you. Also, you guys are, are supported. Mm. Um, it's something that we keep continuing and keep spreading the word of our club and, and we'll keep, uh, you know, hopefully building. So yeah, on definitely. that note, Matt, uh, do you have anything to say to Scott before we let him go? Um, as always, a massive thank you every time you jump on. Uh, you've become the most capped Talking City guest now, so <laughs> you can uh, you can tell Denny when he buggers off to MacArthur that he's been replaced, um, and by someone better. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, from on behalf of the Melbourne City fan base, mate, congratulations on young Cooper. Hopefully, we get a father son deal later on down the track in place for Melbourne City. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bye. Scott. Well, we'll let Scott lead there, guys. Uh, but before we jump off ourselves, Matt Pena, what a win last uh, last night. Yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like Moody's goal was like, I don't know, like I was kind of looking at my phone at the same time and then he shot his goal and I was so happy for him because it was his first daily goal. I was just so stoked. And then obviously the rest of the game happened, but I was really stoked for him. And obviously Jamie with the golden boot as well. Yeah, it was a, um, it was a fantastic result in terms of, we got through the 90 minutes without any injuries. We did some, got some goals, you know, what more can you want? It, the games like that, you just got to look at it. It's 90 minutes. You have to play before finals. It's unavoidable. You've got to get that last game done and you've just got to try and get through without getting injured. And, you know, I think that's a, uh, that's a huge shout out to be able to see these youngsters come through and, and really they are the future of the club. Like that side was, was an impressively young side. When you look at Atkinson, Metcalf, Kola, New, uh, Moody, even uh, Rami coming on, Lockie Wales, you know, and even Rafa, he got about yeah, Rafa, five, I was going to say, Rafa, that was good, yeah. You know, that's a huge window into the future of this club, and, and I think that's a fantastic way to do it, and it keeps the, gets us a clean sweep against the, uh, the Victorian Central Coast, so, you know, that's yeah. always something awesome. Mm. So, uh, guys, um, unfortunately, Sue couldn't make it today, so I just Aww. want to say, on behalf of the Citizens for Recovery, I want to thank you, Matt and Tenna, for the past four weeks and coming on and helping me. I know, Matt, you missed the first one, but 
Next week, guys, we are back with our final episode. Okay, guys, we're going to have some young leaders to come on and talk to them about their experience with the Melbourne City Football Club and the City in the Community Program. Again, in the bio down below, still time to donate. I know it's tough at the moment, <laughs> but anything does help. I want to say on behalf of the CITC, thank you very much for your donation. On behalf of Matt McAdoo, always a pleasure, mate. Love you, mate. <laughs> thank you so much. Always good to be involved. And uh, make sure you go follow Talking City on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe to their YouTube channel. They've been so kind enough to let us use it. For the and you can podcast. rewatch this. You can and rewatch this as well if you've missed out. Yeah, and also <laughs> go follow Tanya underscore Davis on Instagram <laughs> and Tanya Davis on Twitter. So Tanya, thank you very much again. Wearing the thank red and you. white this week. So yeah, I thought like y'all haven't worn this one in a while, so I like it. I like it. <laughs> so on behalf of Melbourne City Football Club and the Citizens for Recovery, my name is Blake Henderson. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.